Welcome to In the Spotlight with Anthony Mitchell. Hello, welcome to In the Spotlight. I am your host, Anthony Mitchell. Today I'm here with Joan Hennahan. She is the Director of Student Engagement here at Benedictine University and also the Director of Student Involvement. She's also affiliated with multiple organizations on campus. So Joan, so tell me, what do you do to promote leadership on campus? So we have several different things. We run the leadership series through Student Life and each student that participates, it's a four week long series and they earn a certificate upon completion that they can use for their portfolio. Different topics include Leadership 101, professional development, um, moving on from college to the real world, servant leadership where you go on a service trip. We do one on women's leadership, men's leadership, diversity, and a whole host of other topics. So how does a student become more involved in in these leadership programs? All they have to do is sign up. Space is limited because we can only accommodate 25 students per um, class, but generally they're run three or four a semester and the student just has to email online or sign up online and then they're able to participate in whatever leadership series they're most interested in. Okay, which one is the most popular of the student leadership? Actually they're all starting from the, the one in the summer, which is for incoming freshmen, we actually have to run twice, and okay. we still have a wait list after that. And then, um, for example, our servant leadership program just recently finished, and we took a three-day service trip, immersion trip, into the city of Chicago to feed the homeless and the poor, and we had 25 people and openings for only 12. And then our alternative spring break trip, which is going to take place in March, we're going to Nashville. 28 people applied and we can only take 12. So there's always a, a big waiting list, but we try to run the series often so everyone can, can participate. So is the session, is it once a semester? Generally it's once a semester for two and a half hours a night for four weeks. Okay. And we run multiple at a time. So we have one for a freshman level, sophomore, junior, and seniors are generally together. Okay, and it's each night? It's Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and sometimes Thursday night. So traditionally, it's been the, the freshmen and sophomores on Tuesday and juniors and seniors on Wednesday. But next semester, it'll be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, just to accommodate the multiple classes and the number of students that are interested in partake, partaking in the leadership series. Okay, so what do you do to promote student engagement on campus? So I'm in, responsible for all of the student engagement. So I work collaboratively with Katie Buell, who's our ac student activities coordinator and Danny Toronto, who's our coordinator for student involvement. And together we work to oversee all the clubs and the student activities on campus. I work directly with Student Senate. I'm the advisor for Student Senate. And I'm also the advisor for the new club, Helping Hands Healing Hearts, which is dedicated to working with Ronald McDonald Charities. Okay, what do you guys do for the Ronald McDonald Charities? We serve at least twice a month. So we provide, go and provide dinner for the families, we cook meals for them. We provide activities for the children. We do a drive each semester where we collect games, um, gift cards, and other needs that the shelter has for the families. And then we go out and just hang out with the kids and the moms and dads that are struggling right now. Okay, well that is all the time we have for this segment. We will be back on In the Spotlight and we will be talking about Joan's early career and her academic career. Hello and welcome to Big News for December. I am Tatanisha Willie. And I'm Rebecca Watson. Here are your top stories. 
On Thursday, November 12th, Benedictine University hosted the event Latino Chicago, History, Place, and New Political Identities, part of International Education Week. Benedictine welcomes special guest Dr. Lilia Fernandez from The Ohio State University to talk about the history of Latinos throughout the Chicagoland area. After the presentation, there was a short Q&A with Dr. Fernandez. I of the Eagles, Adam Sanchez, talked with Dr. Fernandez about how growing up in Chicago helped shape her for her future. This is Adam Sanchez uh, reporting for Ben News. I am here with Dr. Lilia Fernandez from The Ohio State University. How are you today? Fine, thank you. So you said you grew up in Pilsen. How did that help you for your uh, future? Um, you know, growing up in a uh, working class Mexican American community was a really interesting experience. There, you know, there were a lot of things that you witnessed being in um, an urban neighborhood that uh, in a lot of ways really lacked resources. And uh, it, I think, helped to shape who I am as a person and helped to shape my interest in uh, understanding and wanting to know why uh, the neighborhood was the way it was and why um, the Mexican population had concentrated in this community. So I think that that uh, experience helped to shape my interest in that way. Okay, great. And then your book, um, Brown in the Windy City, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. So this was um, really a, a passion a uh, passion that I had uh, in studying the Latino community in Chicago and its history uh, for many years. I was really interested in finding out why uh, Mexicans and Puerto Ricans primarily had come to Chicago in the middle of the 20th century, what brought them here. Uh, I wanted to know where they settled and you know what the communities looked like in that time period and uh, what kind of social activism and, uh, you know, uh, uh, campaigns and movements people were involved in in the 1960s and 70s. So that was really my goal in writing the book is you know capturing some of the history and making people more aware of the presence of Latinos in Chicago. That it uh, making people aware that it was not just a recent phenomena, but that in fact these populations have been here for many decades. And um, what can the United States do to improve um, the immigration policies and laws? Do you, what, what do you think? There are a lot of things that we could do. You know, one of the problems is, um, one of the causes for so much uh, unauthorized immigration is that we have quotas uh, that apply throughout the world. And uh, we are absolutely aware of the fact that uh, Latin America is one of the regions of the country that has uh, the most demand for immigrant visas, for people wanting to come to the U.S. So it's absolutely ridiculous that we have such strict quotas and limits on the number of people who can enter the country legally every year. This is what causes the um, undocumented or illegal immigration, is that people can't get a green card or can't get a visa. It takes years and years to go through that process and to get authorized. So that's fundamentally one of the things that needs to change. Um, you know, there are other things that we need to consider as well, such as our economic policies, our trade policies, and, and other foreign policy in Latin America and our relations with Mexico that could go a long way in changing conditions in these sending countries that would diminish the demand for migration from working people in these places. So, you know, that's another way that I think we could begin to tackle this issue. Okay. Thank you for your time. I'm Adam Sanchez reporting live for Ben News. On November 3rd, the Hindu Student Association held a traditional religious festival for the Benedictine community. This event is known as Gerba. The festival would normally go on for many days, but the Hindu Student Association turned it into a one-night event on a top floor plaza. During the festival, people could take part in a traditional dance, eat foods that had been prepared by HSA, or talk socially with the other festival goers. Ida Eagle reporter Jeremy Voida was able to talk to Narmel Patel about the event. Hello fellow members of the Benedictine community, my name is Jeremy Voida and today we're here with Norma Patel and he's going to tell us about the HSA um, Gobble event. <laughs> um, how did this event get started here on campus? Actually, uh, HSA started before uh, two years. Uh, it's basically the Garba, it's a uh, Hindu culture. Uh, we just uh, do the prayers and stuff and then we do the round and round dancing. It's, it's basically the dance. 
It's just so it's basically just like a huge dance event. Is it? It's, it's basically the huge dance event, but there are the uh, particular steps for that. For the garba, yeah, we follow the steps and we go around and around. All right. So that's what we. Is do. it? Is it like a religious thing mostly, it's, or? It's, it's, it is. It is a religious thing actually. The garba started before many long years. Uh, it's it's a, it's a big festival in India actually. It's a really big festival. The, everybody does garba and like for nine days. Every day for nine days, but over here we don't we don't get to the nine days. So yeah, it's just a one day event. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk with us today, and now it's back to you in the studio. On Thursday, November nineteenth, Benedictine University hosted their annual Thanksgiving dinner for students, staff, and their families. The dinner always takes place the Thursday before Thanksgiving. I have the Eagles' Erica Pirelli spoke with Marvin Blanco about his experiences working Thanksgiving dinner for the fifth consecutive year. Hi, my name is Erica Pirelli, reporting from I have the Eagle. Today I'm here with Marvin Blanco. How are you today? I'm good, and yourself? Okay, so today we are at the Thanksgiving dinner that's annually every year. So how long, how many years have you worked this event? This is actually my fifth year working this event. What's your favorite part about the event? My favorite part is just the fact that the whole school and the whole community gets together and just comes here and eats and they have all a good time. What's your favorite food at this event? <laughs> I like the deviled eggs. Those are good. The deviled yeah. eggs. Um, are you sad that this is going to be your last year? Kind of, because I actually like working this because it's really fast paced. You know, I, I get, make people happy because they have the food out here and everything. So, yeah, it's going to be something I'm going to miss. Okay, last question. What is one of your most like favorite memories that you've had within the past five years working this event? One of them is just... You know what, just learning all this stuff, I didn't know like a school could actually like run a function like this, getting the whole community together. For me, that's kind of cool, so. Well, thank you for your time. My name is Erica Pelley, reporting for Eye of the Eagle. The Best Buddies organization held a talent show on November 14th. The event was held in Cold Bend for anyone, including the Best Buddies who wanted to get on stage, whether it was singing, joke telling, dancing, or reading poetry. Best Buddies is a nonprofit volunteer organization that works with people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and gives them one-on-one -on -one friendships, opportunities to help develop their leadership skills. Brianna Hamilton talked to senior student Lauren Legowski, who has been a part of Best Buddies for the past four years. Hi, I'm Brianna Hamilton with Eye of the Eagle and I'm talking to Lauren Legaki, Legaki and about Best Buddies. So tell me, what exactly is Best Buddies? Best Buddies is an international program that promotes one-to-one -one friendships with those with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So we break down those social barriers between those with special needs and those without. Awesome. And exactly what was the event tonight that took place here? Um, it was Buddies Got Talent. So it was an open mic night slash talent show. Um, it, we basically for this event try to promote inclusion and so, yeah. Did you get up there and do anything? Yes, I danced with the executive board and then I told jokes with my best buddy, Michelle. Awesome. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Brianna Hamilton for Eye of the Eagle. Thank you. As the BU community and the world celebrates the holiday season of giving this year, Benedictine decided to get in on the action by participating in a 24-hour global social media campaign called Giving Tuesday. 100% of the proceeds from the event go to the Student Scholarship Fund. Eye of the Eagles, Omer Syed spoke with Adriana Sukoni, specialist in university development at BU, about the fundraising campaign. This is Omar Syed from Eye of the Eagle. I'm here with Adriana Sokoni, the specialist of university development at Benedictine University. She's here to talk about uh, Giving Tuesday. Hi, thank you. All right. So what is Giving Tuesday all about? Giving Tuesday is a global movement where it's a day of giving back. So we have Thanksgiving, we have Black Friday, and Cyber Monday, and then Giving Tuesday is to give back to your community, to your school, to whatever nonprofit organization you support. Okay. Um, how do uh, students uh, or faculty or anyone from the BU community, how do they donate to this Giving Tuesday program? It's very easy for the community to get involved in Giving Tuesday, and we really encourage participation. So this year our theme is Help a Latte, where we hope to reach a goal of 800 donors within 24 hours. So price really isn't a matter for how much you donate. It's, um, you know, we're encouraging you to participate and at least um, give up maybe the price of your average latte, which is $5 to Help a Latte and you do it online, there's a link on all of our social media platforms, as well as on our Give page on the Benedictine University website. That'll take you to a page where you easily give online, and it takes about 30 seconds. How many people do you guys expect to donate towards this program? 
That's a very good question. This is our first year ever having a Blitz 24-hour social media campaign. Um, we have about 10,000 followers on Facebook and more if you want to combine our Twitter accounts and other social media platforms. Um, and we have about 25,000 emails that we've sent emails out to today. So, you know, based on our participation figures, we're hoping to at least get around 100, but our overarching goal is 800 donors in 24 hours. Okay. Uh, so where is the money or like the charity going towards? Like what programs, what social activities? Yeah. Yeah, 100% of the proceeds go to fund student scholarships at Benedictine. So it's all to help students and pay it forward. Benedictine University held a study abroad fair on the 17th of November in Goodwin Hall. International students from all over the globe came to share what they have experienced during their time living in the United States and studying at Benedictine. Each international club also brought homemade food that represented their country of origin. In Goodwin's lecture hall, Benedictine students presented their experience of what it's like traveling to a foreign country. Just outside the lecture hall, there were booths set up by different companies that partnered with Benedictine to help students embark on their own trip to study abroad. Ben News reporter Anthony Mitchell spoke with Damian Marshall at the AIFS study abroad booth to ask about the process. Hi, this is Anthony Mitchell here for Ben News, and I'm here with Damien. We're at Goodwin Hall for the Study Abroad Fair. Damien, can you tell me a little bit about your program? Sure. I'm with AIFS Study Abroad. Uh, we have programs in 20 different countries, open to all majors, all language levels. Uh, we have an affiliation with Benedictine. We've had many students over the years study on our programs from here. And what countries are you offering uh, uh, opportunities in? Let's see if I can rattle them all off. Um, actually, I've got this right here as a cheat sheet. Uh, we have Argentina, Australia, Austria, Brazil, Chile, Costa Rica, Czech Republic, Ecuador, England, France, Germany, Greece, India, Ireland, Italy, New Zealand, Russia, South Africa, Spain, and Turkey. So how long are the programs usually? They range from as short as two weeks over the summer to a full academic year and then everything in between. Okay, and where can students go to find more information? You need to talk with uh, Mark in the Study Abroad office here, um, or they can always, if they're interested in our programs, go to our website, which is www.aifsabroad.com. All right, thank you, Damien. Again, this is Anthony Mitchell with Ben News. Programming Board hosted their popular hypnotist event Friday, November 13th in the Colvin. Chris Jones was the host of the show, and he was welcomed back to BU with open arms. Chris was a contestant on the popular NBC show, America's Got Talent. The hypnotist's appearance is a crowd pleaser as many students come to see their friends behave in comic ways because they are being hypnotized. Jones's playful energy and the allure of seeing students act in unusual ways has made this one of most popular for programming board. Todd Tanisha Woolley talked to Chris Jones about the show and his appearance on America's Got Talent. So this is Ben News, and I'm here for Chris Jones, and he looks, he's the, the host of the show. <laughs> Hello, so how are you? Chris? I'm well, how are you? Okay, so what's your favorite part of the show? Uh, I like the end when the guy was doing a motivational speech. It was really just a story about texting a girl. I don't know how that was motivating, but it was incredible. It was very good. That was, that's when I laughed really hard, a lot. And so, and, and how long like, like, have you been doing this event? Uh, this event, I think it's my fourth time here, so the last three years. Uh, I've been a hypnotist person for five years, so, yeah, good. Do you have any other, like, funny stories that you can, like, tell us about previous events? Oh, gosh. Um, it is real. I did a show once where, it was my early days, I had people on stage and I said, they're, they're watching a movie and the prince is about to kiss the princess. The prince is about to kiss the princess. And all they heard was they're about to kiss. And two people woke up and started making out. It was two guys making out. Swear my life. Just make it out. And I was like, oh, and I was like, wake up, wake up. And so this girl and a guy wake up and they go, eh. and they start making out. So that four people making out, the whole audience is just like, oh my gosh, you're laughing. And this girl gets up, she's like, he gay. He gay, and I'm like, don't judge, it doesn't matter. She's like, no, he gay. And I'm like, don't judge. She goes, the one kissing the girl is gay. And I'm like, oh, these two dudes aren't gay. Incredible. So that was weird. That was my day at work. It was funny. And you saw, if you, 
I heard that you're a contestant on America's Got Talent. I was on America's Got Talent. Okay, so what was that like? Exciting. Um, I won a million dollars. You don't know that. That's a lie. Uh, no. I mean, Harry Mando shake hands was real. It was nerve wracking. It was exciting. I got to meet Howard Stern. It was a good day. Okay, thank you. And this is Chris, and this has been News. The Black Student Union of Benedictine University held a, a pie in the face event in Crosby on Tuesday, November 17. Students had money raised for the participant they nominated to have a pie in their face. BSU had three rent winners who raised the most money and got a pie in their face. All the proceeds went to support BSU. ID Eagles Lauren Barthel spoke with BSU's treasurer Erica Robinson about the event. Hi, I'm Lauren Barto reporting with Ben News. I'm here with Erica at the BSU um, Pie in the Face. So Erica, how do you decide who gets pied in the face? Usually we just ask students or usually teachers um, if they want to get pied and they either say yes or no and that's how we pick them. Okay. Um, is there any like money that, that's raised for this at all then? or? Mm -hmm. So we have containers and we do a tabling here in Kraza, um during the lunch and dinner times and whatever money, however much money um, a person gets, that's who gets, that's how we determine who gets pied in the face. Um, all our money, all our proceeds go to Black Student Union and uh, the upcoming events that we have. Do you have any events that you are planning to do with the money that was raised tonight? Um, well, we don't have any more for the semester. This is it for the semester, but we're planning for our fashion show that would be in Goodwin Auditorium, so we're really excited about it. Oh, yeah, that does sound really yeah. exciting. So that, that'll be next year, next semester then? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right, well, very good. Thank you so much for your time, and thanks for having the pie in the face today. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> All right, no problem. Uh, this is Lauren Varto with Ben News. Students gathered in Goodwin Hall to raise awareness for Helping Hands and Healing Hearts organization on Thursday, November 26th. Helping Hands and Healing Hearts is a Ronald McDonald House charity organization. Their mission is to provide children with support, stability, and their families. Each year, Helping Hands and Healing Hearts serves dinner to the less fortunate twice a year and holds a fundraiser, both in your community and around the world. Members of Helping Hands and Healing Hearts shared information at the vigil. To raise awareness, Eye of the Eagles' Danya Damra spoke with Helping Hands event organizer Diana Mantuka about the purpose of this event. Hi, I'm Dania Damra with Ben News and I'm here with Diana Mantuka. And um, we're here today um, at the Candlelight Vigil for Helping Hands. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this event? Yes, um, so we are based on funding for the Ronald McDonald House. And so we are having a candlelight vigil tonight to show our appreciation and just the need that these families need. And so we have um, candles and we're going to be doing a lighting ceremony outside just to show that these families that we care about them. And we actually invited some families on campus from the Ronald McDonald House so they will also be able to participate in this event. Awesome. And can you tell us a little bit about the helping hands um, and what you guys do? Of course. So. Um, the Ronald McDonald House is 75% based on volunteers and so we go um, once a month on the weekends and we donate our time and volunteer at the house and we prepare meals and have different activities based on holidays for the kids. So we actually just went this past weekend and we made um, grilled cheese sandwiches and shapes of hearts and then for a Thanksgiving theme we had um, little puppets of Charlie Brown and stuff like that. So that's basically our overall mission that we're hoping to do. Oh, that's really nice of you guys. Um, if any students wanted to join you guys, how would they go about doing that? Um, they can contact Joan Hennehan in her office. Um, our meetings are on Wednesdays and we have sheets, so if you ever see me around or one of the members, um, you can contact us. We have a lot of information hanging around school, so that's how you'd be able to be a part of the club. All right, thank you so much, Deanna. Thank you. This is Danielle with Ven News, signing off. Campus Ministry held their annual Catholic Relief Service Fair Trade Sale in Goodwin Hall on December 1st through the 3rd. Students and staff stopped by to receive complimentary CRS coffee while browsing through products ranging from bars of chocolate to knitted gloves. Many purchased products for themselves and others used to sell to buy gifts for others during this holiday season. Ida Eagles' Caitlin Safarsky sp spoke with Campus Ministry Coordinator Jessica Peake about CRS and how this event helps people from around the globe. 
Hello, I'm Caitlin Shaflarski reporting with Ben U News. I'm here with Jessica Peek who works with Campus Ministry and we're at the Fair Tra CSR Fair Trade event. So Jessica, can you tell me a little bit about the event? Yes, so this is our CRS Fair Trade Sale. Um, CRS is Catholic Relief Services, which is an international organization, relief organization, that works out of the, um, the United States Catholic Council of Bishops. Um, and so the products that we have here are all different fair trade products from around the world. Um, so that means that they were produced and um, made by local artisans that um, CRS has partnerships with. And they provide these, um, these goods for a living wage, which means that they make enough money to provide for their family um, and that they're not um, working in sweatshops and they have good working conditions. That's awesome. Have you guys done this event before or is this the first time? We have done this event before. We try to do it around Christmas so that students can have the opportunity to buy really great Christmas gifts um, for their friends and family or for themselves that have um, a good value to them. So what are some of the products that you sell? We have coffee and tea and chocolate, um, and all of those are organic or fair trade products, um, which those are three are really big products for, um, for labor um, conditions. And so that means that they all come from um, really good places that, that they work to cultivate the land in really fair ways. All right, awesome. One last question. Do you have a favorite product from here? Um, I really like, they have these really great um, knit um, headbands and gloves. I just really love knit products. So, <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm Caitlin Shaflarski reporting with Ben U News. On the fifth floor of Kinlan Hall, Benedictine University celebrated its second annual Crutche Nativity exhibition at the Father Michael E. Komachek OSB Art Gallery. This year's gallery collection was featured by art collector Muriel Fenzel. Chicago native Fenzel has been collecting and viewing art from all over the world for the past 20 years. With this year's gallery featuring art from Africa, Latin America, and Europe, I, the Eagles' Jeff Mateo, was able to interview Fenzel on what inspired her for this year's collection. Hi, this is Jeff Mateo for Ben News, and I'm here with Miss Muriel Fenzel, and we are here at the Komenchek Art Gallery at Benedictine. So tell me, Mrs. Uh, Fenzel, do you gain any inspiration for the art that you have here? Well, I do. I especially when I look at the uh, the. Uh, nativities from Africa and I see the this beautiful beautiful uh, woodworking that they ha that they can do in these far-flung villages and and they're so solemn and and I, I get a quite a, <laughs> a good feeling from them and many of these that's that's what I'm searching for actually to find a, that feel. Okay. Have you actually ever been to Africa? Oh yes three times. Three times? So, yeah. So That's very nice. We brought, back, we brought back several nativities. Okay. I must say it's not the only play, only uh, nativities that I. Uh, it wasn't only the ones from uh, uh, from our trip. I purchased many over the internet. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so, what is the theme that you had here for? Th is it like a Christmas theme, or is it just overall? It is the theme that I want it to be is the universal vision of Christ's birth throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And it's how everyone looks at it and according to where they live, what it means to them and what they use in their area, or their land and their culture. And that is, you know, what I, what I really want. It's not, it started out as souvenirs, but that's not what it ended up being. Okay, so if you had uh, one uh, like moral for the people that viewed your gallery, what would you want them to take away from it? I, I'd like for them to look a little deeper and and see these uh, this continuity of message that we we have throughout all of them. But and then look at the materials that uh, are that they've used people these local people have used from what they had on hand they used recycled things they used uh, repurposed materials and uh, then they've all others are are really fine art so it, it covers the gamut <laughs> yeah yeah very beautiful artwork here so I wanted to thank you very much for your time oh, thank you. this is uh, Jeff Mateo with Miss Muriel Fenzel for Ben News on Saturday December 5th at 10 a.m. in Kenlin Hall there was a culinary adventure for your taste buzz and health Disney's Magic Healthy Living held a presentation on agricultural farming techniques and healthy food choices available at Walt Disney's World Epcot's Food and Wine Festival. 
This presentation was presented by Erica Rumi and helped open the audience to how and where healthy food comes from. And this has been News 40 Sever. I am Tatisha Lilly. And I'm Rebecca Watson. Join us in February for more Eye of the Eagle. But stick around now for Sports with Bo George. Welcome to Ben U Sports for the month of December. I'm Bo George. The men's basketball team started the season strong with a win against the top 25 ranked opponent, Illinois Wesleyan. That makes it two wins in a row against the ranked Illinois Wesleyan program, as the men also beat them last year to begin their season. Things only get tougher from here as the boys set to take on Wheaton College, another ranked opponent. Eye of the Eagles' Alvin Taylor caught up with Benedictine's big man, Sean Solter, to discuss the win against Illinois Wesleyan and what the team must do in order to continue its recent success. I'm Alvin Taylor reporting for Eye of the Eagle, and I'm here with basketball player Sean Solter. Sean, how are you? Doing well. So, a uh, big win, big win last game against uh, Illinois Wesleyan, correct? Yes, sir. How does it feel beating against uh, a nationally ranked team? You know, it's a great road win. Anytime you get a win on, on their home floor, you know, it's a big one. I think the last time we won there was 0-1, so, you know, it's a great opportunity for us to get out there in some serious competition. Big win. Now, how do you guys stay focused as a team going forward and rest, the rest of the season and not get too caught up on this one win? You know, that's exactly what coach talked about. You know, it's one win, it was a big win, but you know, you got to move on. At the end of the day, it's not a conference game, so it doesn't really matter. So we're, we're zoned in for tonight against Wheaton, and we're looking forward to our opportunity tonight. Big win against Wheaton. Go out there and beat them tonight. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. The Benedictine women's basketball team opened both their conference and home schedule with a win over Alverno College. The Lady Eagles were paced by an outstanding game from senior center Brianna Hamilton, who had 14 points and 5 rebounds. The Lady Eagles' record currently stands at 4-1. Eye of the Eagles' Nick Johnson caught up with Brianna after the game to discuss the win. This is Nick Johnson reporting for Eye of the Eagle. I'm here with center Brianna Hamilton. Bree, great game. First question I want to ask you is, how's it feel to start the home schedule as well as the conference schedule off with the W? Very exciting. It's good to know we're off to a good start. We have a few non-conference games coming up, but it'll be fun going into with the W. And it seemed like things started really click in the fourth quarter. So how do you, what do you think happened that uh, gave you guys that spark to finish off the game? I think we started communicating and definitely hustling a lot more. That gave us the kick. Thanks a lot, Bree. I really uh, appreciate this. This has been Nick Johnson reporting for Eye of the Eagle. The Benedictine women's basketball team was defeated by Elmhurst College in a close battle 69-60 in their season opener on Saturday, November 14th. Since then, the Lady Eagles traveled to Colorado where they went undefeated in the Colorado College Tournament. Senior student athlete and starter for Benedictine women's basketball team, Nicole Bodich, spoke with Eye of the Eagles Rebecca Watson about the game and about the team's goals for the rest of the season. Hi, my name is Rebecca Watson, reporting from Eye of the Eagles News. I'm here with Nicole Bodich, and we are here at the opener season women's basketball game. Nicole, um, how do you think today went? Um, I think we did some things well, and we did some things not so well, but I think we have a lot to improve on. Um, but we'll be ready for our game on Tuesday at home. And what are some of the things you can improve on for Tuesday? Um, communication, some ball movement, um, the post can always work on stuff, and the guards can always work on some ball handling. So. You have a long season to go. What are, what are some of the team goals that you guys have for this year? Um, well, first and foremost, we want to win conference and uh, go back to the championship game. But this year, we actually want to win the championship game. So that's our main goal. And what about some of your personal goals? Um, honestly, just to go out there and do my best every game um, and hopefully make first team all conference. So we'll see. OK, well, we have a lot in store for this season. Tune in next time. I, the Eagle News, Rebecca Watson. This has been Ben U Sports for the month of December. I'm Bo George. Tune in for our next show in February. Can you name all nine of Santa's reindeer? Probably not. Just give it your best try. Okay, so there's Dancer, right? Yeah. Prancer, Dasher, Blitzen, yes. and that's our stuff. All right. <laughs> there's Dancer, Dasher, Dasher, that's two. Prancer, Nixon, Vixen, Vixen. Um, Donner, that's five, right? McDonald's. McDonald. McDonald. Um, <laughs> a few uh, more. You guys can squeeze out a few more. Uh, 
Rudolph. Okay. Rudolph. Blitzen. Rudolph. Dasher. Prancer. And that's all I know. <laughs> Rudolph. Dasher. Prancer. That's all I got, really. Um, Dylon? Yeah. <laughs> Vixen. Uh, I mean, the most important one is Rudolph. All right. All right. Okay. Forget the rest. They don't got red noses. A dancer, prancer, yonder, Wixen, Rudolph, uh, and a partridge in a pear tree. Prancer, uh... What's the most important reindeer? The most important reindeer, you know, it's been a while since I watched that. With the red nose. Uh, uh, the red nose, oh, there yeah, you Rudolph, go. yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, see, that's the most important one. That's all I need to know. Rudolph, Blitzen. This is gonna be really difficult. <laughs> what else is there? There's a ton of them. <laughs> Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, I already got Blitzen, and Donner. Yeah. Good job! Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Now we're gonna have to do some sing-alongs, so can you finish this lyric for me? It's like, then one foggy Christmas day, Santa came to say, Rudolph with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then all the reindeers loved him as they shouted out with glee. Rudolph, that red-nosed reindeer, <laughs> you'll go down in history. All right. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh, over the fields we go, laughing all the way. <laughs> Bells on Bob Tailby. <laughs> <laughs> Making spirits bright. <laughs> oh, what fun it is to sing a sleighing song tonight. <laughs> Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. Over the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on Bob Tell ring. Making spirits bright. Something Santa's sleigh tonight. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say Rudolph, with your nose so bright. Won't you guide my squad car tonight? Then all the reindeers loved him As they shouted out with glee Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer You'll be, you'll be something history Dashing through the snow In a one-horse open sleigh Over the fields we go Laughing all the way Bells on Bob tail ring Making spirits right what fun it is to laugh and sing in a slang song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs> jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey! <laughs> Christmas to all the wonderful people here at Benedict University. Welcome back to In the Spotlight with Anthony Mitchell. Welcome back to In the Spotlight. I'm your host, Anthony Mitchell. I'm here with Joan Hennahan, and we are going to be talking about, in this segment, uh, her early career and her academic career. So, Joan, where did you go to school? I actually went to this university when it was called Illinois Benedictine College many years ago. Many <laughs> Probably not that long ago. <laughs> so, what did you study? I studied criminal justice and sociology, and I ended up also minoring in philosophy and political science. Oh, so you started off, did, did you have a different job in mind when you were I did. I out? never dreamed that I would be working at Benedictine now, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. I actually, when I left Benedictine, went into social services, and for most of my career, I worked with abused and neglected children through, my office was located out of the Department of Children and Family Services, as well as I worked for Metropolitan Family Services, and then I had the opportunity to, to work here at Benedictine. Um, so how do you like working at Benedictine? I love it. I couldn't work for any other university or any other place. What was the first position you had? I was actually the development director here, which is um, someone that works on raising money, fundraising with alumni and other donors on the university. And I worked in that position for four years. And then I was asked 
by Marco Messini if I would be interested in coming over to the student life side, which was always my dream. And so I've been in that position now for many years. Was that your dream before you came to Benedictine or just as? No, I, I never thought I would be in higher education. I always thought I would stay in social services. Um, unfortunately, at a time when social services started getting cut due to different political runnings and, and when they look to cut things, social services are always the first to go. And so I had the opportunity to come here and I thought it's just another way of helping people. So I was excited to start. Okay, and for some of the uh, things that you were affiliated with on campus as far as like clubs and organizations wise, like did you start them or were they here? Well, place? I was part of the student senate, but back then it was called um, SGA. We've since changed the name. I also was very active in our campus ministry program and I was the, one of the students that pushed to get the mock trial into a class because when I took it, it was just a club. Mm -hmm. And then we pushed for credit because it takes so much time and effort. So that was one of my greatest accomplishments is seeing that come through and that know that it's so successful now. Yeah, and that's also a good like real, wor real world uh, use. So um, when this uh, mock trial started, um, what, what, were you still working at Benedictine as uh, social? No, that was when I was a student. Oh, that was when you were a student. And then um, when I came to work here, I was asked to kind of take over the student government and we changed a few roles around and so initially when I started in student life I not only worked with clubs and organizations but I also worked to develop the leadership program and the student senate and then I worked one-on-one -on -one with students that had some hardships whether that was financial, emotional, academic and I worked closely with those students. You were closely like on a one-on-one -on -one basis or was it a group meeting? No, I worked mostly one-on-one -on -one with them. It's something that actually Coach John Cooper and I had started working to help making um, some of the freshmen feel more comfortable and be more successful in their academics. That responsibility has now been transitioned to other people, but that was my initial role. Okay, then freshmen would get help. Do you also work with sophomores, juniors that needed that kind of help? Yes, and because I was part of the Student Success Center, so where all the tutoring was involved, academic accommodations. So I would work closely and collaboratively with Anne Marie Smith, Hillary Holacek, Jennifer Gominas, Marilyn Cermak in that capacity as well. All right, that's all the time we have today in the spotlight. Thank you for joining us, Joan, and be sure to tune in next week. Thank you.